Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. We're going to continue our study on identity restored. Identity restored. We had studied identity theft, and now we're going to look at identity restored. And the word identity means sameness, and we get that through words and thoughts. Words, remember, a word is seed. It's so important to realize that every word is a seed. It's full of life that can produce its own after its own kind. Every word will produce, every word has life in it. To identify means to be the same as, to become the same. And when we identify with something, we become the same as. And we empower whatever we identify with. Whatever we have an association, a connection, an affiliation with, that's what we empower. And Satan wants us to walk in the empowerment that, that he wants to be the one, pardon me, I should put it this way, Satan wants us to be the one that's empowering our life as opposed to the word of God. Um, we were studying um, in ladies' Bible study the um, book Girls with Swords by, by Lisa Bevere. And we know that law of confession and we understand about the word of God being different from what we think. For instance, the Bible says, let the weak say I am strong, let the poor say I am rich. Well, she pointed out something and said that in a way that I thought was very um, unique. She said, um, it's two different languages we're speaking. And when you speak another language, whether it's French, Italian, Spanish, whatever, she said, when a word comes in, when a thought, you've got to work between which you're going to process that thought in. And it sharpens your mind, and they say you're, you, stu- you learn more, and you're more intelligent, whatever. And so she says the same thing is with heaven's words and earth's words. God's words and man's words. Because now we're in a situation where something comes up against us that we feel so weak. We are now having to process that. Am I weak? Or am I going to use God's language? We've kind of thought God's language is Hebrew. Well, he might speak Hebrew. But God's language is his word. So am I going to process that when I feel weak? The remembering that the Holy Spirit will bring it to my remembrance that I have studied. The Holy Spirit's only going to bring to my remembrance what I put in there. And so it'll come up. Let the weak say I am strong. So now, which language am I going to speak? I am processing that, and am I going to process it and speak God's language, the language of heaven or earth's language? What am I going to identify with? And Satan's going to try and put enough pressure on you to speak his words. Remember, two kingdoms, God's kingdom Satan's kingdom. God's way of doing things, the world's way of doing things. And the way Lisa Bevere pointed that out as two languages, I thought that was very, very good. Very good. And so what language are we speaking? What are we identifying with? So now we're in a place where we're going to have to process which language we're going to speak. Earth's language or heaven's language? God's language which is his word, or the world system, which Satan is God of. So whatever we identify with, and if we're identifying with God and his system, we will speak his words, and we will then give power to that in our life. We come up sometimes, and we're wanting our future to be different than our past. But I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have heard the word for insanity is the, you, it's doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results. 
And that's what we've been doing. We've been walking in the world system, speaking the world's language, doing the same thing over and over and over and over and expecting different results. And it's time for us to make that change and switch over to God's way of doing things and identify with him. Amen? Hallelujah. So Satan tries to dull our minds and produce fear. Fear that I can't speak God's word in this situation. One, what are people going to think of me? And two, does it really work? Is God's word really going to work for me? It may have worked for Brother Hagen, Oral Roberts, etc. But will it work in my life? My life when I have to go out every day and face whatever I'm facing. Will it work in my life? So we have to settle those kinds of things. Because when Adam fell, he fell to the level of information. What he could take in with his five physical senses. And he lost revelation. Once we're born again, we now have the opportunity to walk in revelation by the Holy Spirit and not just information. So it's like we have to reprogram our mind. We have to take the bugs out of the program. People that are into computers... No, if there's a bug in the program, you're going to have a mess. I remember when David first was working as a programmer and then a systems analyst, he would come home with this. And of course, the whole system was so different then and a computer filled up the whole room. But he would come home with these wax of paper like this. And he'd be going through it, going through it, sitting at the table, going through it. Instead of having to sit at the office, he would come home. He would go through this, marking little things, looking for one bug that was kicking the whole thing out. We have to reprogram our mind and get rid of the bugs that Satan's put in there. They're viruses. They can knock out our whole hard drive. They can kill it. Like they talk about viruses in a computer. Well, Satan's way of doing things is a virus in our life. And it's a virus that will contaminate our mind. And it will cause us to kick out stuff we don't want. So we have to be aware of who we are. The identify. What are we identifying with? Amen? Now in Genesis, I want us to look at Genesis 1, 26 and 28 again. Genesis 1, 26. Hallelujah. And God, ble- oh pardon me, 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, so image and likeness. God said, I want to make man in my image and likeness. And sometimes we get so wrapped up in, well, how tall is he? How short is he? Does he have hands? Does he have feet? Well, that's, that doesn't matter. Those are worldly things. Who cares? It's not important. It really isn't important. Jesus said, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so we're made in his image because people say, well, that's not possible because look at how different you all look. How can you all be made in his image? The image is and likeness is his spirit. And when we get born again, our spirit is new and it's made in his image. And when we get the word of God in our mind and we speak, our mind is renewed or reprogrammed, we speak the language of heaven, the truth. So God says, in my image and my likeness, and always remember there's two different things there, and let them have dominion, image and likeness. Image is the exact duplication of kind. What is that exact duplication of kind? Your spirit. And likeness is the mode in which God operates. We are to operate the way God operates. Now 
And then let them have dominion. Let's go down to 27. God created man in his own image. and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them. There's God's first way of doing things. His mode of operation. Speaking. Speaking and blessing. Speaking and blessing. Or blessing and speaking. You can say it either way. That's what God does. And that's what we're here for. Speaking the blessing into situations. Speaking the blessing into our lives, into other people's lives. Speaking and blessing. You can't have the blessing without speaking. And what was the blessing? Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it and have dominion. If we do not identify with our Heavenly Father... We will not take dominion, we will not take authority, and we will not be replenishing. Because the world's way of doing things is to take, deplete. We won't be fruitful. If we're not fruitful, we have nothing to multiply. And this is our identity right here. That's what God wanted for man for all time. Go back to the original state with nothing missing, nothing broken. And if we think because of where we're at or our current situation or our current employment or our current marriage situation or our current lack of marriage situation, whatever it is, that we can't be this, we've allowed Satan to dull our minds and steal our identity. So God's DNA is in his word and we have his DNA in us, in our spirit man. And so we have to know if we're in God's image and likeness, what is our image of our heavenly father? What is our image of God? When we think of the great I am, God, creator, what do we think? Because whatever our image or thoughts of our Heavenly Father are will impact us as how we walk in this earth. Because it'll depend whether what we're identifying with. Here's a key. Faith flows from fellowship. Satan uses condemnation, guilt, shame, inferiority to make us sin conscious. And sin consciousness weakens the spirit. But whatever we think our heavenly father's like will determine whether we walk in condemnation or not. Whether we can allow that to overtake us or not. We found out before that we're born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed, the word of God, and everything produces after its own kind. In order to walk in dominion and subdue, we must have an inner image of who we are. So, so you don't have to say it out loud, but I want you to ask yourself, who am I? Who am I? Remember, we've looked at that. You are not a teacher. That might be what you do. Whatever it is, that's not who you are. And we have to get down to determining who are we. And we have to separate the spirit from the physical. And God's word is a two-edged sword that'll pierce through that and that'll divide that. Because if we think what's in the natural is who we are, we will never rise above what the world says we can be in that natural. And everything then that comes in, as I said, we're to take it as two languages. So if I think I am a teacher, everything that comes into my thinking... I will process on the line of being a teacher and what I can do as far as being a teacher. 
as if I'm looking when I look at it as I am an ambassador and I happen to be in this position here as a teacher in this school as an ambassador from heaven. My reactions, my work ethic, everything will be different. What I say will be different. How I process things will be different. So let's look now. We've read this before, but this is sort of our launching off scripture. I'd like to look at 2 Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. We've studied this before, but we're looking at it again. Because this talks about our new nature. Verse 1, 2 Peter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us, Through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The uh, Amplified says, Who have received, obtained an equal privilege of, like precious faith with ourselves, in and through the righteousness of God. Precious faith, you receive precious faith in and through the righteousness of God. Faith will flow when we know who we are. Faith will flow when we have the right image. And that image is righteousness. Faith through righteousness. Without a realization of righteousness and what righteousness is and how we get there, faith is not going to flow. Faith with us through righteousness say this faith through righteousness faith through righteousness faith through righteousness can you have faith apart from righteousness but when you have righteousness you'll automatically have see faith cometh by hearing you get faith for something but it works through righteousness And if our image is wrong and our identification is wrong, our righteousness will be wrong. And then faith won't flow. I don't know. Has anybody here believed God for something and it hasn't happened? You don't have to put your hand up. I have. Has anybody used the name of Jesus and it hasn't worked? Why? You won't find it in here where it says sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't. Depends if God smiles down on you at that particular moment or not. It's because our identification is wrong. Our identity is wrong. Satan's come in and muddied the waters. Verse 2. Make grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord. Verse 3, according as his divine power. So it's his divine power. God's divine power. Not yours. God's divine power. That has given unto us all things. Everybody says all. That pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him. That called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these faith through righteousness, according to God's power, through knowledge, through the understanding of this revelation knowledge, are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. And these promises will cause us to be partakers of the divine nature. God's nature. And Pastor Dave was talking about casting your bread and things happen in the world. Faith through righteousness will have grace. God's unmerited favor. 
the divine intervention on our spirit by the Holy Ghost. Peace, returning back to the original plan of God, the original state, nothing missing, nothing broken. Through understanding and getting revelation of that, because of God's divine power, he's given all of us all things that we need for life and godliness through revelation knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that we can be partakers of God's divine nature. God wants us to partake of his divine nature. So what is the divine nature? God's class of being, having God-like qualities. Is that not what we read in Genesis? God's going to make man in his image, his likeness. Now he's saying, I want you to have this divine nature. When you have it, you will have all things pertaining unto life and godliness. You will lack for no good thing. Now, divine nature, excellent in the highest degree. God has made us to be in his class. But before we go any further, we are small g gods. God is God. Amen. Elohim. Yahweh. El Shaddai. He is preeminent. And without him we can do nothing. We can't ever step out and say, I'm God, I don't need him because I've got the Holy Ghost, I've got this, I've got that. He is God. Amen. And without him we are nothing. And in acknowledging he is supreme, we also should acknowledge that what he says, he knows, he, he tells the truth, and his word is truth. And what he tells us to do should be our decision to, hey, I'm going to do what he says, because he is God. You see, this is where our image of God comes in, because if I think he's going to trick me, or he's mean, or self-seeking... And he tells me to do something, I'm going to think, oh, you never know what God's going to do. He just might be out there with a stick. And the minute I start doing what he tells me to do, he might just stick that stick out and trip me and cause me to go black. And then he's going to let somebody with hobnail boots walk all over me. And we will never step out and do what he's called us to do because our image of him is so skewed. But he is the creator. We are his children, but we do not take him out of the equation. We honor him. We worship him. He is God. All-knowing. Omnipresent. Amen? So when we're teaching this, that we have the divine nature, it flows from him. But never, ever get ourselves lifted up. That's what Satan tried to do, get himself lifted above God. Like, I don't need you, God. And that's what he tried to get Adam and Eve to do, was lift themselves above God. At no time do we ever say we're higher than God. We're not even equal with God. Without God's power flowing through this, we could not create anything. It's his word we speak, and his is the creative power in his word. But it's his words. And he brings his words to pass. We don't. Hallelujah. We, we have to understand this, because too often we get self-focused, and we start Focusing on ourself, and then we do something, and because it doesn't work, we end up in sin consciousness, the whole thing anyway. Say, well, nah, this stuff doesn't work. Okay, let's go on. The divine nature is in us. It says that in those scriptures, the divine nature is in us. So we have that divine function to operate here in the world. When things don't happen, and when we're not acting right, it's because we're trapped in the soul realm of the world with an unrenewed mind. 
And it's the natural. We're, I'm talking about the natural. Satan's way of doing things. So when we renew our mind, we get that second language and we start thinking different. When we think different, our acting will be different. Remember, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results. Well, whatever we think about will set our, get our emotions going. And when our emotions set us in motion, we will do what we're thinking about. You don't do... I mean, there's things that you've learned. I mean, when I go to get a glass of water, I don't think, oh, I better get a glass. And then I better go over here and I better turn the tap on. I don't go through that literal thinking anymore. It's in there, I've done it, so it's an automatic thing. At some point, I had to learn that process. Well, we have learned a lot of processes living in the world that are not according to the word of God. For instance, and we're sort of going... I'm way ahead of myself here, but that's all right. When we really were looking at this a lot Wednesday night, but Satan goes about seeking whom he may devour. Now, it talks about the wiles of the devil. This is in Ephesians chapter 6. The wiles is Satan's way of doing things. And what he wants to do is infiltrate your mind... To get you to walk a certain path. Now when we were in the world, he knew what we were doing and we looked at that, familiar spirits and everything. And we walked and did a certain thing according to the world. And we kept walking that path. And a thought would come in and I'd walk out that path. And it just was warning. And it's in our mind and so a thought comes in, I automatically respond that way. Sometimes getting out of those ruts is painful. It can be painful. I know there's people that just won't do it. They just don't care. They just go, I don't care. I've been like this, this is the way I do it. Like it or not, I'm just going to keep doing it. And they're in that rut. And so the minute a thought comes, you just walk it out according to that path, that rut. Remember once Kenneth Hagin says, you can get in this rut and it's like a coffin with both ends kicked out. You just keep walking. It's a long coffin. You just, you're there. And so when we're born again, if we don't renew our mind, Satan will continue to put the thoughts in and keep us in this rut. And here's where the pressure comes. I find out that I'm supposed to speak God's word and that I'm the healed. So I'm stepping out of that rut And Satan will put that thought in to get me back in this rut so I react the way I've always reacted. Remember we talked about that box with the lid on it? We had a little doll in there and it couldn't get out. That was the parameters. That was the rut. The lid was taken off. But they refused to go any higher because they kept going according to this rut. A thought would come in. That's how they acted. A thought would come in. That's how they acted. If we do that, we're continuing to live in the soul realm and identifying with the God of this world system. It's like you you hear about these hunters. Um, I know when reading and studying you know, in school and the history of Canada and everything. And and explorers would come in and they were not really trained. They would find a guide that was familiar with the country and they would know how to track animals or anything else. They knew what to look for. A twig that was bent. Animals walk this particular path all the time to get to the water, and the longer we walk on this path, the deeper it gets. The animals could wear this path out. And it takes the power of the Holy Spirit and a realization of righteousness and who we are to get out of that rut, to get off that path. 
to quit identifying with that, to immediately, because we renew our mind to the word of God, that when the thought comes in, I'm now thinking, what language am I going to process this thought in? Heaven's language or earth's language? So the divine nature in us, we're to operate in that here. This is not for heaven, that's for here. We're to retrain our mind to being this, having this divine nature in us and understanding that. When we retrain our mind to the divine nature and to thinking the way God thinks, and our mind is renewed and retrained, our body will do what our mind tells it to do. You don't see somebody just going off doing its own thing. Your body will do exactly what you tell it to do. What you're thinking will affect your body. Which is a lot to do with healing. So let's look now at James 5.16. James 5.16 James 5.16. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. So let's look at 16. That's what Elias did. Why? Verse 16, confess your faults one to another. That is not your sins. And I'm not going to get in that teaching. But you don't go around confessing your sins to one another. That's false and that's a different thing. So... And pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. And, and Elias held back the rain and then it came. So what, what is that? Your fervency in prayer is a result of the revelation of who you are. You won't have that fervency, that faith, that release if you don't understand your righteousness. If there's any type of condemnation, unworthiness, inferiority, you won't have the prayer of a righteous man that avails much. And sometimes I believe that's why we've just not gotten prayers answered we have to know who we are it's a righteous man now we're all the minute we're born again i'm going to look at that scripture next we're the righteousness of god in christ but it's one thing to have it here and it's another to realize and know and know what that righteousness means how it came and what it is and what it'll do for us because faith came through the righteousness By grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself. It's a gift of God. And saved, when you got saved, the gift, righteousness. 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 What happens is too often because we're in this rut... We're engaging Satan in carnal warfare. And the minute we do that, we lose our identity in Christ. And the minute you engage Satan in carnal warfare, you empower him. Because he's God of this world system. The minute you stand against him in the flesh, in the natural realm, you're empowering him. Because he's God of that realm. So often we're 
withholding and standing against Satan from this path that we've traveled and the information we've taken in from the world system instead of from our righteousness instead of spiritually from heaven as ambassadors. And every time we step into that trap, we've empowered him in our lives. We're saying, hey, Satan, you just really are something, aren't you? And we walk out in this path that he keeps putting thoughts in our mind and we react to them. And he's got us under his thumb. Always. Always. And we're back to he steals our identity. Because we need two in agreement. We need our spirit and our mind in agreement. And our body will follow. And just say, yes, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. And I'm a child of God. And I'm this and I'm that. And well, I don't really think I need to do that. Because this is the way I've always done it. So I'm just going to keep doing it the way I've always done it. I'm in the natural and I'm fighting Satan in the natural. And remember, I said the minute we do that, because he's God of this natural system, we empower him. And he knows what we're doing. I mean, he's not always there. He's got all these little low-level devils, familiar spirits and stuff. They just keep putting these thoughts in our mind and we just keep reacting to them and reacting to them and reacting to them. Which is why often our prayers seem to end up nowhere. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. We've got to pray from that place of our righteousness. Let's look at 2 Corinthians, please. 2 Corinthians 5. Hallelujah. God is good, amen? He's never left us stranded. He's a good father. He's a good father. Seventeen. Well, let's do sixteen first. Um, let's Second Corinthians five. Let's look at six, sixteen. Wherefore, henceforth, knoweth we no man after the flesh. That means the carnal nature. We're not to know each other from the carnal nature. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Verse 17, therefore, because we don't know each other after the flesh, therefore, how do we know each other? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new species that never existed before. The minute we make Jesus Christ the Lord of our life, believe in our heart, confess with our mouth, Jesus, your Lord, forgive me, come into my heart. That old man is gone and I've become a new species of being. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And this is where we fall. We think, well, I'm a new creature in Christ. All things are new. And we continue to do the same old thing we've always done. And it doesn't work. The new is our spirit. When we get born again, the only new is our spirit. Because in Romans 12, 2, it says, renew your mind. Be not conformed to this world, this world's way of doing things. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you are, you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What became new is our spirit. Our spirit became alive unto God. The old sin nature was gone. There is no sin in your spirit when you're born again. It's gone. I believe it's in Ezekiel. It says where Jesus, um, the Lord said to the people, he said, when I passed by, I saw you polluted in your blood. We were polluted in our blood. Because the sin 
The life is in the blood, but that sin nature was passed from Adam to every man because of the blood. Passed through the blood. And God says, I saw you polluted in your blood. Defiled. The number of Christians that continue to walk in defilement is amazing. We've got the life and nature of God. Let's keep going here. Behold, all things are become new. That is our spirit. That sin is gone. That is not my nature. I no longer have the seed of sin in me. My blood has been changed. I have God's DNA in me and there's no sin in God's DNA. And all things are of God. This working, becoming a new creature in Christ, a new species that never existed before, not having any sin in us, is of God. Everybody say, it is of God. It is of God. My new nature is of God. It's, that's very big. Because we fall into works. What can I do to impress God? What can I do to make myself better? What can I do to give me an upper hand with God? Look, God loved us so much when we were lost in sin that he sent Jesus. He sent the best, his only son, when we were lost. He sent Jesus because he loved us so much. He's not going to love us anymore. That degree of love is a world's idea. And if you're nice to me and you do, say you give me $5, well, I'm going to love you. But, oh, you gave me five fifty, so you got 50 cents more love. <laughs> now, isn't that true? Isn't that the way the world works it? The more you do for me, the more I'm going to love you. We did nothing. Zero for God. And he came and said, I love you so much. Here's my son. I love you so much. You're now a new creature in Christ. All you have to do is receive my son. Those things are of God. This is so important because we think, because I haven't done something, I'm not quite as righteous as I should be. And all these things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself. Who reconciled you to God? He did, through Jesus. You didn't reconcile yourself to God. He reconciled you to himself. By Jesus Christ, and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. And Pastor Bill really talked about that ministry of reconciliation. You can go up to somebody and say, hey, because of Jesus, God's reconciled you. All you have to do is receive him. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to do anything. You just have to receive Jesus. He's already paid the price for your reconciliation. He's already paid the price for you to be a new creature in Christ. Nothing you can do, just you accept him. I want to tell you about Jesus. This is what he did. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Reconciliation. He's given us that ministry. Because of what he did for us, he wants to t- us to tell others. 19, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Isn't that wonderful? He didn't go and take, take, take a bucket, all your trespasses and say, hey, you, here's all your trespasses. You better pay for them. You got to do something with them. They're wiped clean. Now we renew our mind to get out of that rut. Verse 20, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. We're ambassadors. We're from another country. We're from heaven. We're born again from above. Our home country is heaven. You're an ambassador. Be reconciled to God. He's saying, be reconciled to God. 
Accept God. Receive what he's done for you. For he hath made him to be sin, Jesus, who knew no sin, that you might be what? How are you made righteous? Jesus. Who makes you righteous? In all of this scripture that we read, is there anything in there where he tells you you have to do something to be reconciled to God or to become righteous? Is there anything? Nothing. 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 Nothing is two words. No thing. So my righteousness is the same as yours. Is the same as yours. Is the same as yours. We've been reconciled by the same blood. We've been made to be righteous. So... We're made righteous. Now we have to connect, and I guess we'll do it next week. So next week or the week after, whenever. What we're wanting to connect is righteousness to the divine nature, whereby his divine nature we have all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So we're going to connect righteousness and the divine nature. Because they're really one and the same. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. So. Let's say this. Let's stand. Just stand please. And we're going to worship God. But I'd like you to say this. Father. I thank you. Because you love me so much. You sent Jesus. I thank you that you have reconciled me. To yourself. I thank you. That I am. The righteousness of God in Christ. I thank you. I'm a new species of being. That never existed before. Because of your great love. You made it possible for me to be your child. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Give him praise and thanks. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise you, Lord. Praise.